Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Anya. Today I'm going to share my experience with trading makeup here on YouTube. Recently I traded an eyeshadow palette for another eyeshadow palette. If you're interested in my experience, just keep watching. I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you do like it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Let's get into the video. An intro on what happened. I had bought the Subculture palette from ABH and I ended up really hating it. I will leave a link up here for my video for the Subculture palette and I had tried to use it after that video a few times and I I just never could make it work for me so all it was doing in my collection was collecting dust because I really didn't know what to do with it and I had talked about doing a collab with Kat from Men in Fashion here on YouTube I know I've been doing collabs with her all week so you probably already know who she is she had mentioned you know maybe trading makeup and she had mentioned well you have a subculture palette and I really wanted to try it but I didn't want to waste my money on it and I was like yeah let's trade and then and that kind of got put on the back burner and then she had mentioned in one of her videos that she had the Jaclyn Hill palette from Morphe which I had never purchased and she was like I can't use this I don't know what to do with it and I was like hey let's trade and like, so we ended up trading she actually opened the box on camera and swatched it and all of that I know how she feels about the palette but I'm gonna let her make her own video on that I received this I want to say like two weeks ago and I've been playing with it ever since this is what the palette looks like I've used every single color in this palette so I know how each of these shadows perform so I am gonna give you a little bit of review and whether I think trading was a good idea or not I know I'm like very behind on this review but I'm not a die-hard Jaclyn Hill fan. I don't follow her on YouTube. I do follow her on Instagram. Her makeup looks are stunning and I go to her page a lot for inspiration. It's just that she's a little hyper for me personally and I don't have anything against Morphe. I know there's a big controversy around Morphe. I've only ever bought one thing from Morphe and that was the Kathleen Lights Morphe palette which I do enjoy. I still have it and I still use it but I've never bought a brush from Morphe or anything like that. I really never had a want to purchase anything other than the Morphe Kathleen Lights palette. With that being said, this is the palette. I think Kat ordered it on the day it was released. So she got the original packaging and it just says this palette is dedicated to all my loving subscribers, XO Jaclyn. And then here are the shades. You do get a mix of matte and shimmer shade. I find the ratio matte to shimmer is really good. I do have some qualms about this palette. This retails for, I believe, $38 and you get 35 shades. So you get a lot of product in here. You can find this in Ulta so you don't have to pay for shipping anymore. One of the first things that I really don't like about this palette is that there's no names on the palette at all. I like to see the names of the shades somewhere on the palette. For me, it just helps me out when I'm looking at it and when you're doing tutorials and things like that, I think naming the shadows do help. So what I did is that I created my own little guide and I put it on the back. I did this in the same order. So pool party is right here and then I put pool party right here. So when I'm looking at it here, I can see that this shade is pool party and it's not flipped around. This is how I set it up. Just did circles and then I took swatches of each of the colors and I just applied it to the bottom of the name. It's just helpful for me to see the name on the shadows, especially when I'm going to talk to you in this video. It's going to help me a ton. I would suggest going and checking this out in person at the store if you can because on camera and I've seen this in every single video I've seen, every single picture of the palette I've seen, the shades look different. In person, a lot of these shades look the same. I think that it is confusing. These shades right here, they're varying shades of brown and red that on the eye, I don't think translate as different as they do on camera. Also, these shades right here are very similar to shades I find that are very similar. A lot of the shimmers are also very similar. These five right here are varying shades of pink and red, which I think, again, doesn't translate on camera as well as I would like it to. All these shades are workable, which is nice. I find that some of them skip a little bit on the eyes. Hard for me to, like, unskip it, you know, like, try to fill it in. And I end up having to, like, pat my eyeshadow down instead of going in circular motions. It is fixable. It's not that big of a deal if you know how to fix it. But if I'm a beginner using this palette, I think that I would have trouble with some of the matte shades. The shimmer shades are pretty good across the board. The shade right here called Twerk, I was 
in love with when I saw this palette. This was one of the ones that really intrigued me and it's actually one of the ones that I do not like. This just doesn't have a lot of payout for me. I find it very dry for a shimmer which is odd as well as royalty here. I think you can get a lot of looks with this palette. My favorite shades in the palette are probably Creamsicle, Pooty, Hunts, and this shade right here, Soda Pop. This shade is probably my favorite shade in the entire palette. It looks almost black. This is like a very plummy black color. I love this shade. I don't have anything in my collection that is this shade. This is actually the shade that I have on my lids right now. Blends nicely. I think you can pack it on nicely. So I really like this shade. My favorite shimmer shade is probably this one right here. It's called Sissy. It's very rosy with a gold shift to it. Crane Apple I like too. Really quickly I wanted to show you the shades that I found the most dry. I would say that the last two rows here, the mattes are pretty dry. The shade Jada, Diva, and Chip are the worst for me. I feel like they're very patchy and they do skip on the eyes. Chip is probably my least favorite out of the whole palette. I find that this really skips on the eyes. It fades on my eyes and it leaves creasing, which I've never had a problem with creasing in my eyes before, but that does crease for me. I would say the mattes in these three rows are a more creamy formula than these two rows. I also want to mention that some of these red tone shades will stain your lid so just be careful with that. My least favorite shimmers are probably these four, these two being the worst, and then these two are just color preference for me. I just wanted to really quickly show you which ones were more dry and which ones were more buttery. I would say that these six up here are the most buttery out of the entire palette. But this row is good as well. These ones are just very dry, chip being the worst again, Enchanted and Jada. The black shade Abyss, but I don't find it that black. I actually find it quite dry. I also love Jax a lot. And these two shades, I love these two shades. My problem with these two shades are that they are so similar. I like these for inner corner highlights because they're not shimmery. I do think that she could have done away with one of these shades and just made one of them a matte cream color because I do have to pull in a matte cream shade to set my eyes and I know that's a big problem for a lot of people. When you're offering 35 shades in a palette, I don't think that you should have to pull in anything else to make a palette work and for me, I can't just put on eyeshadow primer and go into blending. Nothing will work that way. That's a gripe that I have as well. When I first got this, I was like, ooh, that does not look like the pictures and I don't think that when you put this on the eyes that it's really easy to decipher between colors, which is a good and a bad thing because some of them blend lighter and then deeper, so you have a nice transition, but I think there's too many of the same sort of similar shades. I get where she was going with it. I do think it's workable. I just... It's not my favorite palette. I'm usually the type of person that can look at a palette and create in my head at least seven looks that I want to do with it. This palette, I had the hardest time trying to think of look. I don't think that this is a bad palette. I do think the $38 price tag is a good price for this palette. I just think that this palette might confuse you because so many of them are similar. Don't mind my handwriting. I know my handwriting is bad, but you can kind of see it more so here how similar all of these shades are you get like the pops of color here but everything else is sort of a shade of pink or red or brown do you think that if you can go in store and look at it and visually see in your head looks that you want to do this palette will be worth it for you because there's so much product in here another thing that i don't like is that it doesn't say on the actual package how long this is good for and i find that odd because most products put it on the package it does have like a batch number here I'm making a mess of this palette by the way and that's another thing that's kind of like eh about it is that it's very hard to clean this like material I hate looking at dirty makeup and this palette looks awful already the subculture palette I did get it for $42 US and I didn't pay for shipping on it and I feel like it shipped really fast and I'm not sure how Morphe's shipping and everything is because it's been so long since I've ordered from them. I will link Kat's video on this palette when she got it down below. I don't regret trading with Kat on this palette. I think that it was a good trade on my part, probably more so on my part than hers because I do think that this is a good palette. I like the palette and I will continue using it. I just think the quality is not as good as I expected it to be. I didn't pay for it, so I, I wouldn't pay for it, but after using the palette, I still wouldn't pay for it just because it 
it's just a little confusing for me. When I look at palettes, I like to be inspired instead of confused. And this palette just made me confused. So having tried the palette, I don't think that I would purchase this for myself. But I am glad that I do have this palette in my collection. You might be able to find shades like this in your collection already. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and this video and what I thought of this palette. I really enjoyed trading makeup with her. If you have anything that you want to trade, I know she's always open to trading makeup. So definitely contact her or you can contact me if I have anything that you want to trade for. I will do that. Those are my thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs> Please make sure, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That got so much hype. I mean, this this sucker was hyped. Enjoy this video and find it helpful or useful on this stem. You might be able to have, I think oh, this palette was weird for me. And the shades that I thought I would absolute, and the shades that I thought I wouldn't like, I actually really like. Very strange for me. You do get a mix. Ooh.